stand there. And I said, Lord, wherever I will stand, I will testify your goodness. Because you have, you will do greater things if I choose uh, to follow you in spirit and in truth. So that was the transformation. The very next morning, my wife woke up and then he, she said, there's something different in this house. Because she couldn't smell the cigarette. Amen. Every morning, even before I brush my teeth, I have to smoke. That was the kind of life that I did. And you smoke, mm -hmm. and it's written on the cigarette, uh, smoking causes cancer. From the Minister of Health. From the Minister of Health. And you one of the... Rep you know, most of the time, for you that are watching, you know, most of the time, we are the biggest hypocrites. Please we say something, and we do something else. Mm -hmm. Whether we go to church or in the Banua, those of you that work in the government, we are biggest hypocrites. And this one example. Eh? The Ministry of Health of Fiji and you doctors that you are watching this, uh, uh, this uh, interview, I want to challenge your life. Amen. How can you be a good doctor to the people when you are not living a life? Praise You're supposed to be an example. The same is with the teachers. The teachers that you are watching this, uh, this interview. You know? What is your life outside the classroom? You know? And uh, for us pastors, uh, what is your life uh, when you finish with the pulpit uh, in your church? And it's a, it's a challenge to us that we must serve God in spirit and in truth. So, tell, tell us, continue. Yes, Amen. Uh, just especially for sharing, I, I thought of a scene, uh, a scenario that happened while I was in Nangali. You know, when, when I run out of cigarette, I'll go to Nangali village. People from Nangali watching this video will know. A doctor will knock at the doors of those selling cigarettes. If they run off cigarette, I'll borrow their cigarette. That's how the, the devil was working in my life. And to be transformed is a miracle. Praise God. Praise God. To walk away from that life is just a miracle. It's life changing. And then, you know, uh, where I start uh, telling the Lord, you show me the way. You show me the path to go. And uh, still going to the Methodist, not drinking grog, because that time I was he starting to hear the sermon. And we always talk as a couple, me and my wife. My wife went to university, I went to a teaching school of medicine. And we always take, uh, talk about uh, how you preach. Basilebu and Dabin Basilebu. We were just from the uh, mainline church. Mainline church, and we were just observing and said, this couple might be very, uh, they have a, uh, wisdom. They, have, uh, they are very smart. They must be having good uh, position in the workplace. They must be managers. They must be, the way they share is just the reality of things. And the, the boldness that you have. That was with the talk of the family. And every Mbul FM will hear the Mbul FM. We will watch the DVD. That time I see the pastor Savi Tuvang, I think, I believe. He was our agricultural officer in Nangad. And see the pastor Tsovili Sigimboni was, uh, was my nurse in Nangad. So we were still going to the mainland church until one day when somebody was preaching. I left Grog, Kani Kani was no longer there, I don't smoke, I don't go to the nightclubs anymore. I was sitting there and just listening to this preacher, full Kani Kani, praise the Lord, mm -hmm. and then he was just trying to preach to somebody, he just having two degree, praise the Lord, mm -hmm. changed life, left smoking, left cover, left cigarette, nightclubs, nightclubs, and sitting there. Then the Lord spoke to me again. You have made me this, this decision to leave all this, and yet you come again to listen to somebody who's doing the very same much thing. doing the same thing. It's just like, a, uh, you know, the pigs. Yeah. And after they wash, they go back there. Yeah. You, you, you put the pig into a shower, shampoo, everything, eh? body shower, shampoo, and maybe roll on the four legs and uh, put some spray on. When you leave that pig, the pig will go back to the man. Eh? Exactly what men are doing. We go to church, we listen to the sermon. After the sermon, most of the time, uh, the mud is already in our pocket. We pick up the mud and we start to smoke again and we go. And that's what I call hypocrites. And until and unless somebody filled with the Holy Spirit, we speak with authority. Eh? And when he speaks with authority, he takes away uh, the things. Uh, that we, we enjoy. It's a heart-piercing message. When Peter was full with the, with the, with the Holy Spirit and, and he was speaking to the people, 
And the Bible says it was heart piercing yeah. because he was full with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I want to challenge our life Amen. for those of you that are, are listening on this wonderful morning. Amen. When you feel with, with the Holy Spirit and Amen. preach and share, you will feel that it is uh, heart piercing. This, this is something that can happen to you. Number one, you will love the preacher. Number two, you don't like the preacher. That means the person that is preaching is full of the Holy Spirit and trying to teach you or take you away from the life that you enjoy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Continue the Lord. To then the Lord convict my heart. Go to a church that keep the holiness of God. So we just stayed home. We didn't uh, join a church. We just stayed home. And then I went to the Vakutawa and I said that, uh, okay, I, I will just stay home. Uh, I will not come uh, again to the service. Uh, never this church at that time. Sending my apology, my itatau to the church. So I stayed home. And then we were, we used to come in the weekend in Cornelia. Uh, my father-in-law used to work at the research station. So one of the Sundays, we were just sitting there and then we heard that there's a gospel uh, uh, choruses coming from uh, uh, the Fiji College of Agriculture. And I just told my wife, we have to go there. So my wife said, I believe New Methodist is having church there. And then we went, me and my son. And then, you know, at that time when you want to make a move, there was just hurdles. And the family was just asking, where are they going? Because they know me, a choir, and uh, always uh, active uh, in youth, Matavitoka, and all those things. So we went that day. It was Jordan Worship Center. And uh, just a family was there. This, uh, the sister and the two brothers, they were singing. One uh, pastor was uh, sharing Bible study. And at 9 o'clock, we tuned into Bulan. As soon as I entered, the Holy Spirit convicts me that this is the church you have to be. Praise God. That keeps my hope. Uh, I want to challenge you, for those of you that are live on Facebook, and those of you that are live on, uh, on, the, on the television, that until you make a decision, God will not speak to you. Yeah? God will uh, share with you, God will nurture you, and God will challenge you. But until you make a decision, then God will, will go to another level. See, God spoke to him, yeah? and he made a decision. Then he went to the church, continued to, to go to the church. And then God spoke again in the church. You're not supposed to come here. It's the holiness of God. Hallelujah. So when he looked for that, eh, to break that barrier, then God spoke again. This is the right place. You know, some of us that are watching this, you know, you, you've been there for donkey's years, and uh, it's about time that you make a decision. You've been hearing the message, you know. God does not want us to be the hearer of the word. God wants us to be the doer of the word. How many people like that, that you can be standing here and sharing the gospel and preaching the, about the gospel, but God cannot use you until you make a decision that you can use by God. Can, can God trust you with the little things? Can God trust you with the little talent that you have? I, I will tell you no. Until you make a decision, until you make a big decision to walk away from your friends, to walk away from your relatives, because these are the two hurdles that you face all the time. Your friends and your relatives, when you want to follow God. That's why Jesus said, eh? Blessed are those who live the father, the mother, the brother, the sister, their land and their home, and come and follow me. Eh? He said, hundredfold in this life. The next one is eternal. See? That's what, what God can do to anybody. Because Peter asked that question. Lord, what is there, is there anything for, for, for us there? If we come and follow you. Eh? If we leave everything uh, and come and follow you. Is there, is there anything there? I want to tell you. We are listening to a testimony that miracles do happen. So I went to church that day. It all started. And I started doing the ends here. In the name the discussion folks. When I joined and, uh, you know, fasting was there, praying, keeping the holiness of God was there. And uh, I start to do things. Then God start to show up his miracle. Hallelujah. God start to show up his right plan for me. Amen. And uh, it was just amazing looking through the years over my promotions. Praise God. Some of the people whom uh, have done medicine a few years before me, some of my seniors are still sitting in lower position that I'm sitting. That's a miracle thing that God did. So from Nangali, promoted to head the whole of Kandavu, a subdivisional medical officer Kandavu, senior Praise medical officer. 
God start to move. And that's one thing that keep pushing me. He justified that he changed me. He, it's a, a, a living testimony that it's an evidence of serving God. So promotion to Kandavu. From Kandavu, I got another promotion. I went into Sinai to serve as a, um, a, a doctor in the 2, 2 FIR, 2nd Infantry Battalion at the uh, El Gora in Sinai. That was a senior medical officer position. Another promotion there. When I returned, another promotion to a subdivisional medical officer in Lomoiviti, looking after the, the whole Lomoiviti province. So it was just, these are just high level bullet point of what God did. And besides, all these promotions, amongst all these promotions, all other small miracles that it will take ages for me to right. explain. And from uh, Lomoiviti um, uh, subdivision, head of uh, Lomoiviti subdivision, I received a call from uh, uh, our divisional medical officer that year, that permanent secretary, want somebody to look after Nandi to improve Nandi. And there were 14 of us heading the 14 subdivisions. And out of the 14, he chose me to go there. Praise Nandi. It was just a miracle. That's one thing that, you know, when he has a plan for you to prosper, he's got a plan. And most of the things we are just running around the bush, looking for the right plan, ending up in no plan. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. So that was the success. I went to Nandi. From Nandi, then I got the scholarship. Praise the Lord. Amen. That was a different, uh, just a testimony in itself. Praise the Lord. To come to Hebrew University that has lapsed for about 14 years. The last person, the last doctor that came and did uh, his master's here was in uh, 2001. Dr. Temo is now in the World Health Organization. <coughs> Previous to him was Dr. Salasaketa, the former permanent secretary for health. So they were just brought here to be uh, leaders of health. And then 14 years down the line, praise yeah, the Lord, God. there was this scholarship that came again to the same university, Albert Einstein started the university, and now is amongst those that were selected. Only two from the Pacific. Me from Fiji and uh, a colleague from Papua New Guinea. So it was just a blessing, especially to stay here in this place for one year. It was in the university here in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that's uh, what happened in my career path. As I go back, now I'm leading uh, Lautoka SAO subdivision with uh, 104,000 population. And, uh, you know, promotions just continue and continue. My latest promotion, I did not apply and I did not attend any interview. I was just given the promotion, and I was said, uh, the, my director of uh, human resources at the permanent sector is uh, uh, happy with the work that you're doing, praise the Lord, in Nandi, he has promoted you. I tell him somebody who's listening here today, Amen. you are applying for the job for promotion, and you, uh, some of you even go under the table to go for the promotion. No, go to God. Receive Jesus to be a personal Lord and Savior. Walk with him correctly. Praise He's God. got a plan for you. You want promotion, promotion is in Jesus. You want restoration, restoration is in Jesus. You want to uh, receive better in this life, life is uh, better life is in Jesus. King David said, better is your life than love. Praise the Lord. Better is your love than life. Praise the Lord. And I will exalt him, I will rejoice him because his love is better than life. So while you promoted on the secular world, you ever thought that one day you'll be a senior pastor? Never. Never ever. Praise the Lord. Eh? Uh, you know, when I joined the church, I like people testifying, and, uh, especially when Nasile uh, usually preached. So that was me. I, I just, I'll just sit here. Amen. I just listen all the time. I didn't know that I have a talent to testify. I didn't know that I can preach. I didn't know that I can do Bible study. Never. I didn't know. That. You know, uh, most of the time, uh, people, uh, they ridicule and sometimes they speak negative on new methods because of them, especially for my testimony. Eh? But that, wa uh, that is one, one thing the Lord placed in my heart. Make sure what I've done to you to be part of my word. Because my word will be powerful because of what I'm doing in your life. Eh? That's why uh, people can talk and people can uh, judge, but that's what the Holy Spirit told me. Uh, you need to, to tell the people what I'm doing to you. Because if we, if we don't tell the people what the Lord has done to us, then it can be, that's pride. The Lord. Yeah, we don't want to exalt God in what's happening in our life. We are looking at ourselves that we achieve things, we do things, we, can, uh, we have the, the talent and we have the gift and we can do it. We have the, uh, 
and the, the uh, academic achievement mm. to do this. But when we testify that this is God, God did this, God did, did, did this, what we are doing, we are uplifting God in what God is doing in our life. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, I believe the preaching is powerful from new melodies mm -hmm. because of the testimonies. Praise and so uh, uh, I also encourage the Tal Tal When they preach, make sure they, uh, they insert their own testimonies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the testimonies are the fruit of God's work. Praise you know, when you look to the book of Matthew, uh, you look to the book uh, of Mark, uh, Luke and John, it's just full of testimonies. Mm -hmm. When you look to the uh, book of, uh, uh, of Moses from Genesis right up to Deuteronomy, it's just, uh, it's just the, the building of Noah's Ark, the, the, the calling of Abraham, the calling mm -hmm. of Moses, the, the provision in the, in the desert, the provision in this place. Mm -hmm. Those are the fruit of the word of God. Mm -hmm. And if you don't talk about that, they're, they're, it, it seems like pride comes into us, exactly. that we do things because we can do it. Amen. No, we do things because God said, and God will complete it. Amen. 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 So now your, 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 your preaching, your sharing is very powerful because of testimonies. And uh, I believe that's why the senior pastor in the New Methodist, because they're following what I'm doing, because I'm following what he's telling me to do. Hallelujah. Yeah. All the provision. I talk about the bus. I talk about the truck. I talk about resigning from my work i talk about the moving of cyclone i'm talking about coming to a to a place that uh, a lot of uh, negatives a lot of barriers and god opened doors amen. until today amen. because it's a miracle working god Hallelujah. amen eh? so uh, we are coming to the end of the uh, episode two uh, before we go to the to the last episode episode three of um, miracles do happen so from the uh, mount olive uh, uh, here in uh, Jerusalem, uh, we say thank you very much for listening and watching. Uh, give us a little bit of uh, time to break and then we will come back to you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.